it going guys? Today we're going to take a look at the Sigma 24-70 f2.8. I've been using this lens for a couple of weeks now and it is really quite impressive. This lens is kind of multi-purpose, it's great at shooting almost anything. The range of 24-70 to just gives you so many options for different compositions, all with the same lens. This lens is built like a tank, the whole thing is made out of metal, all of the switches are super durable and just really robust I must say. Along with the zoom and focus rings, they're just so smooth and feel like they were built really, really well. Now since the construction is almost all metal, this guy is coming in at around 2 pounds, which is pretty heavy for this size of lens. I really had no problem holding it and walking around, I have it on the Canon 1DX Mark II, but you're definitely going to feel its weight if you have no other kind of support. With that said, if you want to put this on something like a gimbal, I would not recommend that first off because it is so heavy, but then also because it has such a wide zoom range, and as you can see the front kind of element moves out as it zooms, which would mean that if if you had this on a gimbal you would have to rebalance every time you wanted to change the focal length so this is not a great lens to put on a gimbal i would opt for something like a prime lens which sigma makes some great ones in their art series as well this is not my first sigma lens i also have the 18 to 35 1.8 art which i'm using to film this video right now in the past i've used almost exclusively canon lenses and i just started moving over to the sigma because they offer some really low aperture, high quality, really well built lenses. This is a really solid setup both for filming and photos, which I didn't even mention. This guy actually has optical stabilization built in. That's another one of the switches on the side here. So there's a switch to turn on optical stabilization and then you'll see with the focus switch there's actually three modes. There's your standard autofocus where it'll just control everything, there's manual focus where it'll just not control anything, and then there's a middle function where it's manual override. So it will do its own autofocusing, but if you touch the focus ring whatsoever, it's just going to stop autofocusing and let you take control. So this is a really cool feature, that's what I had it in almost the entire time because I'll often find that um, if the, the 1DX Mark II is really great at autofocus, both in photo and video, which I would mainly say the, uh, the manual override is probably for video. Um, so it's really great at focusing, but if it's accidentally focusing on something that you don't want it to, and if the back of your camera, I guess, doesn't have touchscreen like this does, you can manually override the focusing and get it more in the range that you want it to. And then it'll just make the final corrections and know exactly what you want it to focus on. This is a brilliant feature that I've never seen in any Canon lens. All right, now for some test footage. I just got back from San Diego where I used this setup of the 1DX Mark II and the Sigma 24-70 2.8. This combo is just amazing for photo and video. I shot some pretty amazing stuff and as you can probably tell, the 1DX Mark II is not too shabby of a camera. The clarity and just sharpness that this lens has is amazing. I also took it down to the border of Tijuana, Mexico, which was really fun to shoot with this guy. So right on the border wall with the United States, there's a ton going on there, and there's actually a little kind of gym park where I met some local flipper slash parkour dudes, and they let me film what they were doing. this was like my first time using this lens, I had full confidence that it would be able to perform like I expected it to. If you'd like to see more of what I shot in San Diego and Tijuana, Mexico, I made a brief kind of travel video, and that is on my personal channel, which you can find the link to in the description below or in the end card. Alright, so now before we wrap up this video, there's just a couple of negative points. I wouldn't say there's anything bad, uh, but there's a couple of downsides. The first being the price. As you can guess, this guy is pretty expensive, coming in at $1,299. As with all my videos, the link to buy this guy is down below if you want to check it out. Now that is quite a hunk of cash to be spending on a lens like that, but this is just such a versatile range 
and along with the 2.8 aperture, there's not too many lenses that are built this well in that range and 2.8. Now Canon makes a very similar lens, which I was looking at before purchasing this guy. It's also a 24 to 70 2.8, but the reason I went with the Sigma is because the Canon is $1,749. Plus the Canon doesn't even have image stabilization. That's a pretty big deal. Now on the topic of image stabilization, it does have it and it does work. It's just not very significant. So I had it on the whole time and it does do its job, but I do have some other lenses like the Canon 18 to 135. That image stabilization just does so much. And this, um, it did a little bit, but really it's not a super significant amount of stabilization. Final downside, the focus ring is pretty small and it's right next to the zoom ring. I actually haven't really used the focus ring that much because the 1DX Mark II has such good autofocus, but if you're using a different camera or if you really want to have full control, um, the focus ring is a little on the small end. It's also reversed from most of my lenses. The focus ring is more towards the end and the zoom is closer to the body. This one, the zoom is all the way to the end and the focus ring is kind of in the middle. That wasn't too big of an issue for me. All of the markings are very clear and it just works really naturally. So I do have this on the 1DX Mark II. I've not actually tested it on any of my other cameras like the ADD, which I'm filming this on right now. I'll get back to you in the future about that combo, which will be kind of more zoomed in. The reason this lens is so great with the 1DX is because it's a full frame camera. Also on that note, I'm working on a review for the 1DX Mark II that will be coming soon. It's just such a beast of a camera. I really wanna make something great and informative and original. I guess that's kind of just what I try to do with my work. This is actually the first video in a month that I've posted. I've just been so busy. I don't know. You can find more stuff on my personal channel sometimes. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like and subscribe if you want more awesome content like this and the 1DX Mark II. There's so much more happening in the future with this guy and everything else. I'm going to stop right now because I'm just rambling on. Thank you for watching, and as always, don't forget to keep it pro.